Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark, and welcome to my studio. So, what have I got for you, lovely lot today? Well, this is another one of Margot's challenges from our Facebook group, which she entitled Just Hanging Out, which features some lovely paintings of washing lines in colourful situations. So, we're going to be having a go at this lovely little alleyway with some hanging washing. So, come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. Oh, have you put the washing out? Yes, of course. Don't forget to hang out to the end because we've got a lovely selection of paintings from the Facebook group of these washing lines. So, here is the photo reference which is from Pixabay and I've changed it around a bit added in a window and for an extra interest put in a couple of plant pots. Okay so for today's materials for my paper I have a loose sheet of nice thick Saunders Waterford it's 300 pound 100% cotton and it's a rough finish but of course any decent watercolour paper will do. And for my colours I have some cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, cobalt blue, sap green, Payne's grey, burnt umber, burnt sienna plus lots of different colours for the clothes. I'll explain that later. And for my range I have four brushes, my mop, three quarter inch flat, number 12 and number 6 ring. And as always, here is the pencil drawing, which is free to download from my website. Link in the description below. And just to make painting the background a lot easier, I'm simply masking out all the clothes with some masking fluid or drawing gum. Now, because this is a vertical or portrait format today, it has allowed me a bit of extra space to include my palette here at the side and I'm just pre-mixing some Payne's Grey, Yellow Ochre and Burnt Umber. And a good tip is always to mix more than you think you're going to need. Nothing worse than running out mid-wash. Off we go! And I'm starting by covering the complete sheet with clean water using my medium mop. So the idea is to get a very light wash down first to neutralise the white paper. And I'm not being particularly precise where the colour is going. It's just simply a base wash. So just to make sure I maintain those white areas, I'm just lifting out here with a scrunched up tissue paper. So before continuing on with the next stage of washes, make sure this is totally dry. Next, I'm just re-wetting this bottom section here because I want a nice natural blend into that shaft of light. Next, I'm painting wet on dry up to the edges of these side walls. Lots of very wet paint and letting it all mix and blend on the paper. And I find my flat brush is ideal for this. Right, just had a mad moment, so I'm going to chuck in some cobalt blue and why not some dioxidine purple, just for no apparent reason. I like to do that sometimes, it just makes the painting process a little bit more interesting. So I'm just drying off my brush here to lift out a little bit of paint which has crept into that glowing light. Mm -hmm. 
Again, let this dry, then I'm just adding in some clean water again, and then dropping some burnt umber into the back wall corner here. a little texture in the wall up here. Okay, so now for the shadow under the arch and as you can see some of the wall is still wet and the Payne's Grey is merging into it, but that's all fine. And as I don't want some of these edges to be too crisp and sharp, I'm just dropping in a few little blobs of clean water to add some interest. A little shadow under the window with some burnt amber. And just adding some little shadows into this gothic sort of window which I've just invented. Very light wash here of Payne's Grey, and I'm also dragging my brush across the surface of the paper to create some dry brush texture. Same thing over here, as I really want to try and create that illusion of a pebble dash wall. Of course, a bit of splatting and a little bit of dabbing out with a tissue. And this is the way I like to paint, moving around the picture and building it up, rather than completing an area, then moving on. I think here is a recess in the wall with a door, so I'm just painting the edge with some burnt umber. dropping in some Payne's Grey for a shadow here at the top. Now with my number six brush, I'm just building up the details. And dabbing out here with a tissue, colors just a little bit too strong. So for my warm shadows here, I'm just adding some Burnt Umber into the mix with Payne's Grey. Okay, so for the suggestion of some cobblestones here, just some simple little dots and dashes with the occasional smudging with my finger. Just trying not to be too exact.
And here I'm just dragging my brush flat against the paper to pick up some of its texture. Now for these shutters, and they could be any colour really, but I'm going for a wood effect with some burnt sienna. Okay, so next for these pots, and you can paint them in any colour you like, but I'm going for a terracotta feel, so I'm painting them in with some burnt sienna. Lifting out a highlight on the left hand side, but also adding in some burnt umber to create a shadow side. So while the pots are drying, I'm painting in that lovely cast shadow across the path, straight in with a fairly dark value of Payne's Grey. But the really important thing is to create some soft edges, so I'm painting a line of clean water along the bottom and top. And it's also important you don't paint this too thickly, as you want to see some of the details through the wash. and a few more small details using my number six brush and some paints gray. So a really thick and creamy wash here of Payne's Grey to create the shadow side of these beams. few more small details here and there, but I'm really conscious that I don't want to overwork this.
So this dark section of the wall is very important as it helps with the perspective and lead your eye into the focal point of the arch. And there's a little suggestion of a window up here, so again I'm just using Payne's Grey for these details. And splattering is always a good technique for creating random wall texture. Next for the drain pipe, which I'm starting by wetting with clean water, then dropping in some yellow ochre at the top, then with some Payne's Grey painting in the shadow side. Now you can clearly see that this is not vertically straight with the edge of the paper, but that's one of the good things as it creates a good sort of quirky urban feel. Next for the plants and I'm using my normal mix of cadmium yellow and cobalt blue but just adding in a touch of sap green to brighten it slightly. Then with my number six brush lots of short dabby strokes trying to get a pointed end to suggest those leaves. Then a much darker bluey wash to create some of the shadows. And I've added a little burnt umber into this dark green mix just to make sure it's nice and strong for this little spiky plant. And a little bit of burnt umber for these little connecting branches. But don't paint them in everywhere, just in the gaps. So now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break. And what about a glass of washing line Pinot Noir? Okay, I admit it, I made this one up because I couldn't find anything. Next, I'm just taking a rubber eraser and removing that horrible old masking fluid. 
Now, with this laundry, it's your chance to have some fun. So please paint these in any colors you like, but make sure that they're nice and bright as it's a lovely contrast to the fairly muted scene so far. But here are a couple of useful tips. Lift out some highlights with a damp brush, but also add in some shadows. Now here's the thing, now, I know I've mentioned this before, but I recently heard an artist say that shadows are always gray, which is simply not the case. They are just a darker version of their own color, seen clearly here in this original photo. So whatever color you're painting your clothes, simply darken the color for the shadow side. I promise you just adding gray onto your color won't look as natural. Dark blue shadow here on a lighter blue pair of jeans. Now this could be one of those tie-dye type of things that we used to wear in the 70s. I know I did, with my giant flares and massive heels. And if you want some more defined shadows, just come back on top once the original wash has dried. And yes, I think we need to add at least one white garment, and this is where we can add the grey for the shadow. And let's just drop a little bit of yellow into the wet wash. Perhaps this is a flowery pattern. Now that yellow shirt has got a bit lost with the background. So to create some contrast, I'm painting in a dark value top just behind. Mustn't forget the washing line, and I'm using my trusty number three rigger for this. A little bit of green to suggest something up here in the window. And then some final white touches with a white pastel pencil. Maybe these pegs here could be white. and using my finger to create some soft edges. There we go, all done, and this one in about three and a half hours. But hang on a minute. So that plant which I added in looks a little bit unnatural, and I realized because of the direction of light, it does need a small cast shadow. So it's just a warm gray mix from Payne's gray with a touch of burnt umber, but a nice light value.
it's just a small detail, but it would annoy me if I didn't do it. And now we are done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. So coming up now are some lovely paintings from the Facebook group of some washing lines. So please check those out. And remember, make this one your own, paint in your own clothes. Just enjoy the experience and have fun. And of course, <laughs> please don't forget to like. It does help. Leave a comment. I do read every single one. Can't always reply to them. Subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, I look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. Cheers now, everyone. Bye.